Now that we have begun the process of self-analysis and have some idea of ourselves as separate entities that can be in relationship with our source, where do we go from here? How do we fulfill our potential as companions and co-creators with the creative force called God? First, let us acknowledge a definite direction of downward causation with a distinct triune pattern. Spiritual, mental, physical. In other words, spirit is the life, mind is the builder, and the physical is the result. The grand creative process began with a spiritual impetus that was shaped and patterned by the mind. All of physical reality, including the present human condition, is the result. In essence, this is the process of projection from spirit through mind into physical reality. In Casey's cosmology, this is how the physical universe was created. This is how the earth and all its life forms came into being. The process is ongoing and we are a part of it. From the beginning to the present moment, we are gods in the making, co-creators with the divine. So how do we do it? How do we maintain a healthy separate sense of self to know ourselves to be ourselves and yet one with God? If God is not a control freak, if God does not micromanage every detail of our lives, then how do we fulfill our role in the partnership? Specifically, how do we use our God-given ability for creative expression in a way that allows us to be in relationship, companions with our Creator? The concept of ideals is the answer. We are using this process all the time anyway. It is the way everything comes into the world, flowing seamlessly into our daily lives. Usually we are just not aware of it. Unless we awaken to the process, it happens automatically, unconsciously. Working with ideals provides a method for being a conscious, responsible co-creator while simultaneously maturing as a soul, sort of on-the-job training for becoming a god. That may sound a bit ambitious, but it is our destiny as souls to realize the god essence within each of us. We all have ideals or patterns that shape our lives, whether consciously or unconsciously. Ideals are not ideas. The mind may generate ideas and goals as part of the building process, but an ideal is the motivating force that activates the mind in the first place. The Casey readings actually recommend an ideals exercise for working with ideals. The basic concept is to put down on paper the spiritual, mental, and physical ideals that we want to direct our lives. The process begins by identifying a spiritual ideal, the highest spiritual quality or attainment that we can imagine. This could be a person such as Jesus or Buddha, or it could be a spiritual virtue such as love, patience, or cooperation. The choice of spiritual ideal belongs to each person. Next, the mental attitudes that are consistent with the spiritual ideal are identified. Since mind is the builder, what are the thought patterns that mind will use for building the ideal life? For example, what is your attitude toward your family, your work situation, play and recreation, and so forth? These are the mental ideals. Finally, the physical activities and behaviors that are consistent with the spiritual and mental ideals are listed. How we treat people and how we use our bodies fall within the realm of physical ideals. Thus, by consciously identifying and applying our ideals, the spiritual, mental and physical dimensions of life are brought into coordination and unity with the highest spiritual pattern that we can imagine. Because working with ideals is a dynamic process, ideals change as we grow and develop in consciousness. 
So when doing the ideals exercise, the reading suggested using a pencil with an eraser. It is comforting to realize that we can work with ideals in our own way, at our own pace, and we don't need to be rigid or dogmatic about it. Meditation is useful in helping to identify ideals. Application in daily life is essential for our ideals to awaken us to our spiritual heritage and potential as souls. Without an ideal, a person can wander aimlessly in life or constantly change direction without really getting anywhere. The Casey approach to ideals puts spirit in the driver's seat in terms of what is controlling our direction in life. Working with ideals is a way of establishing priorities with our highest spiritual aspiration as the main concern. By consciously working with ideals, you may realize that regardless of what you are doing, it is essentially the same thing. You are always doing the spiritual ideal. This makes for a very efficient and focused way of living. You will probably be amazed at how much you can accomplish when you are always working on the same thing, just from different angles. There is oneness and unity to your life that is very powerful. Instead of feeling scattered, there will be a focus that is both intense and peaceful. So what is the standard for your life, your spiritual ideal? You do have one, everyone does. It may be unconscious or ignored. There is nothing more important in your life than knowing your spiritual ideal. Although you will probably work with various spiritual ideals over time, the Casey readings indicate that the highest spiritual ideal is an awareness of the relationship we had with God when we were created, while still in the realm of spirit, before the rebellion and creation of the physical universe. This awareness of oneness with God is like a memory pattern imprinted in the mind of the soul, ready to be recollected and awakened by our will, a conscious choice that we can make to restore our full relationship with the divine. The readings describe this ideal relationship as knowing ourselves to be ourselves, yet one with the whole, or God. The Casey readings use several terms to identify this ideal state of being, including universal consciousness, Christ spirit, and Christ consciousness. The man Jesus achieved this level of Christ consciousness and provides a model of what it means in terms of flesh and blood living in this material world. Jesus made his will one with God. Thus Jesus became Christ, just as we each can become Christ if we will follow his example to become full companions and co-creators with our source. This pattern of universal consciousness is the highest ideal.